Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Deadpool 3 is the MCU crossover event the studio feels most confident in, the only major release to actually be moved up as opposed to moved back, now releasing May 3rd, 2024, and currently rushing to finish principal production. The more we learn about this movie, it increasingly sounds like Marvel is positioning it to be the crossover event we've been waiting for. Not just one that shows us some glowing timelines and says, uh-oh, but actually walks and talks us through what is happening, and finally, finally, bridges the gap between the MCU you and the X-Men. So will Deadpool kill the Fox X-Men universe? Because I think that's what's happening here. By the way, New Rockstars is now a network with three channels. This main channel for Easter eggs and answers to your burning questions, the deep dive for special film analyses for me, and our new channel, The Break Room for our instant reactions and our secret invasion after show. Subscribe to all three and support our network with some merch at nerdriot.shop. Okay, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman announced last September that Deadpool 3 was happening and that Hugh Jackman was returning as Wolverine, offering few details beyond that, but I did make a video that decoded what exactly they were saying via lip reading? Since then, Ryan Reynolds has done some flirting on Twitter with the fan account from his minutes from the TVA and Loki, and it has been confirmed that most of the cast from the 2016 Deadpool and the 2018 Deadpool 2 are returning, including Marina Baccarin as Vanessa, Karen Sony as Dopender, Leslie Uggams as Blind Al, Brianna Hiddlebrand as Negasonic Teenage Warhead, Shirley Kutsuna as Yukio, Stefan Kapichik as the voice of Colossus, and Rob Delaney as Peter from the X-Force. We also learned that Emma Corrin, who played Diana Spencer in Season 4 of The Crown, has been cast as an undisclosed villain, and Matthew McFadden as Tom from Succession has also been cast, rumor has it, as a TVA agent. As this movie has transitioned from development to production this spring and summer, rumors have swirled around other big names. On February 9th, Patrick Stewart told ComicBook.com, I've been told to stand by. I know nothing more than that, honest. On April 18th, Ryan Reynolds told Variety that to get Hugh Jackman to agree to come back as Wolverine, quote, what we pitched him was enough of a divergence from the character that he knows and the character that he's left behind that it gives him something completely new to play and something that he's really excited to do. On May 24th, a few weeks into Deadpool 3's production, Halle Berry posted an interesting Instagram photo of herself with short white hair, which many believe was a sign that she was shooting scenes as Storm for this movie. And as often occurs with these dry news cycles, online scoopers began to post unconfirmed, anonymous, unsubstantiated claims that not only Halle Berry, but James Marsden, Cyclops, and Famke Jansen, Jean Grey, were returning as well. The latest comes from scooper Casey Walsh, who claims that Ben Affleck has been spotted on set for Deadpool 3, leading some to speculate that he could return as Matt Murdock, Daredevil from the 2003 Fox movie. Now, these latest online claims have not been corroborated by any legitimate news source, so please take them with a grain of salt. Again, this often happens with high-profile Marvel releases, and half of the claims end up being bogus, and scoopers will often then shift to things like, well, I saw concept art, when that concept art was just one of 12 different things artists pitched for a movie, or there was a conspiracy where they shot stuff of the movie, but it was cut. But there have also been some rumored leaks coming from places like Reddit and 4chan, which honestly read like not that bad fan fiction, claiming that the X-Men in this movie will come from a rogue timeline that Deadpool has to destroy. A universe in which Magneto won during the events of the 2000 X-Men movie and created a world dominated by mutants, kind of like House of M. But based on what we know from Ryan Reynolds has actually said, the Wolverine in this movie must come from a different timeline than any of the ones Hugh Jackman has played before in X-Men Days of Future Past or in Logan and a House of M Wolverine would be one Logan that we haven't seen yet on screen. While House of M is best known as a Scarlet Witch story, Wolverine is really the point of view character. The only Marvel hero who remembers initially that reality has been altered by the Scarlet Witch and the one who has to lead the charge to awaken the others one by one. A Wolverine who also comes from reality where mutants are running the show would also be a change of pace for the character. Rather than being a second class citizen, he'd be a first class citizen and this would allow him to suit up in a blue and yellow suit and join a true X-Men task force as we see in the X-Men animated series. It would also make him more of a fascist villain with a logical antagonism for a Deadpool trying to destroy this authority. Your enjoyment of Marvel's secret invasion will not be complete if you don't watch Inside Marvel on New Rockstar's new channel, The Break Room. We are going to be answering all the burning questions after each episode and stop at nothing to uncover all of the scrolls in the MCU. The Break Room is our brand new channel with breaking news, reactions, after shows, and some really fun content that you've never seen from us before. On The Break Room, you'll see all the New Rockstar's faces you've come to love as well as friends of the channel, new and old.
holds. And celebrity guests will be legally obligated to make appearances. There are some up there already, for real. Go look for yourself. Join us for every episode of Secret Invasion as we pour over all the evidence to figure out who and who isn't a scroll. and your hottest burning questions coming out of every episode. If you don't want to miss a single clue, subscribe over at youtube.com slash breakroomnr. Now, Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy and Hugh Jackman's announcement video implied that Deadpool and Wolverine would be fighting in this movie, so this would change the plot to be more of a conflict, a la Deadpool versus Cable, than a team-up all the way through. If Ben Affleck Daredevil shows up in this, that would pay off a deleted joke with Charlie Cox and John Favreau when they shot scenes in Spider-Man No Way Home, because there was going to be a reference to the fact that Favreau played Foggy Nelson in the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie. They're going to have a line to the effect of, my memory's kind of foggy. In addition to being associate producer for the Fox X-Men film in 2000, Feige went on to produce the 2003 Fox Studios Daredevil with Ben Affleck, and that's where Feige met John Favreau, beginning their collaboration that would lead to Iron Man in 2008 in the dawn of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I think it's not too crazy to at least expect this movie to be a send-off to Kevin Feige's pre-MCU history as a Marvel producer. Deadpool kills the Fox Universe. Through the framework of the TVA, Time Bandit, Wade Wilson, who used the restricted device of Cable's time travel watch to change the timelines in the epilogue of Deadpool 2, would now have to prune the most tangled and nonsensical branches of the multiverse. And he's the only guy for that job. Deadpool would have to fight Wolverine and Storm, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Professor X, Affleck, Daredevil. And if the Fox Marvel titles are all on the table here, that would also include the 2005 and 2007 eras of the Fantastic Four, which means Chris Evans as Johnny Storm. Chris Evans is obviously down to cameo in Sean Levy, Ryan Reynolds movies after his cameo in Free Guy. So long as Kevin Feige gives his blessing, which you have to imagine he would, this is a lot easier to pull off than Hugh Jackman returning as Wolverine to begin with, and if this movie does revisit the climax of the 2000 X-Men film with Magneto on the Statue of Liberty, there's a perfect opportunity here to connect that with the climax of Spider-Man No Way Home, which opened rifts in the sky to other corners of the Spider-Verse, also around a Statue of Liberty. When the Statue of Liberty first showed up in the trailer for No Way Home, my conspiracy brain led me to think this would be the perfect place to connect these dots, and when it didn't happen, I thought, well, someday. And now, all it would take is for Deadpool to look into a glowing light in the sky from Liberty Island and to see on the other side of that rift, Doctor Strange trying to hold it all together, asking, who the hell are you? I just think that if Marvel decided to move up this film to the coveted May 3rd, 2024 slot, Kevin Feige must think he's got a huge hit on his hands. The movie we all wanted Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness to be, and even better, a movie that can make fun of how that and other Marvel titles disappointed some people. Now, we don't know if Marvel will stick with Deadpool 3 as a title, so I want to know from you, what title do you think they should go with? Deadpool Kills the X-Men? Deadpool versus the Multiverse? Deadpool Homecoming? Ugh. I mean, that's his sense of humor, not mine. But I want to hear from you. Comment down below and support us with a shirt like our Secret Invasion inspired shirts at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.